All right, so I'm going to go through different packaging strategies in Fusion 360. Now, there's two kind of normal pocketing strategies that everyone seems to use. That's the pocket, uh, the classic pocket, which is pretty standard, has some downsides, and I'm going to go over the downsides here in a moment. And then you have the adaptive, which you can use as a pocketing, which works pretty well uh works better in modern machines than than with uh say older machines and i'm going to get into that because with with modern machines they don't like long linear cuts on one axis or generally they don't and the reason they don't is i'm gonna flip over here this is a mock-up of a mill so say this is a cnc mill and you've got on this in this case linear rails and we're running linear rails in a lot of modern machines now linear rails are really fast um, they don't wear out much uh, because they've got roller pins packed inside their uh, housings which makes them really fast and pretty nice um, they're not as rigid though as say a dovetail or even a boxway and so because they're not as rigid, but they're faster, they're more suited for an adaptive. Because if you know, every time that moves, it's moving in two directions. That's dividing the work in between the two axes. So it's a division of work um, in between the rails and the ball screw and the servos. It divides up the work. Also, if you notice, in the adaptive toolpath, it's rapiding quite a bit. Now it's rapiding on the surface, which you know it's not picking up the uh, spindle at all, but it's rapiding quite a bit in between cuts. Uh, more modern machines, that's no problem. They can be pretty fast that way. Older machines, um, that can become a serious issue because they don't wrap it as fast. So in the long haul, a pocketing would be faster and it would work better with the rigidity of an older machine since it's all that force on one side at a time. Now, the issue with an adaptive, however, is if you know, as that toolpath comes around, it's only making contact uh, every, every so often. And that causes some kind of some kind of weird surface finishes and because it, con it contacts periodically um, it doesn't leave say a perfectly flat or or if you have a finishing end mill in there uh, a very nice surface finish it can actually show with uh, higher grade end mills so the way around that is to use a contour and then just follow it up with the contour say you have two tools a finishing and a, a roughing and a finishing and then you can come in there with the finishing tool and just you know contour it out on um, downside with that is you need a tool change like for this you could take that to size if this is just a few one-off pieces and um, you're only running maybe five of these that tool is not going to wear down so you can just you know do it real quick and be done but if you're going to run a hundred of these a tool change might be needed if your machine is fast enough to pull off a tool change and save on cycle time again it comes down to speed an older machine slower you're going to uh, regret every tool change you have in a production area now on a one-off job that's no problem um, but if we come here one of the things you'll notice is um, Fusion doesn't use cutter comp or doesn't use cutter comp by default. So your G41, G42 doesn't use it at all. I'm going to show you how to switch over so you can fine tune at the machine and not at your computer making multiple programs to tune in that newly reground end mill that you just got back from the tool grinder. So the way you actually do that is you can go into here and go under passes. So edit your tool path and go into passes and under comp uh, compensation type 
You see if I hover over it, it will show me. And then in controller, it mentions that it uses G41 and G42. So nice feature, always use the hover over. It really will save you. Even, even sometimes, let me see if I can get one. Sometimes it will give you uh, image and illustrations of what is, there we go, what is climb milling, what is conventional milling. So it's, it's, it's a really good way to, to learn quickly. Um, you know, maybe you don't know what climb milling is. Maybe you're new to this. Maybe you have just a hobby router. Um, I've only got a little hobby mill. So if we go in here and we change the compensation type, we changed it to in controller. That's going to change the toolpath, and you'll see how it changes the toolpath. And I'll flip it back afterwards. So there we go. The toolpath is now different. Now what changed? Well, unlike before, it's hugging that wall now. So it's hugging that sidewall that it's cutting off. Now if you were to code this by hand and have it hug the sidewall, it would blow it out the hole out or the slot out by the the radius of the tool so the radius of the tool larger on both walls so it'd be effectively the diameter of the tool what cutter comp does is it shifts it, it tells the controller to shift it over by the radius of the tool so even though it's hugging that wall if i go in and i simulate this i'm going to simulate the whole thing so and then i skip along it's Actually, the actual toolpath is right there, and it's just going around and making contact with that wall. That's all it's doing. Now, this is simulating cutter comp. So if I switch back, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, if I switch back to in uh, the uh, PC, in uh, computer, so I switch back real quick, go in here, compensation type, in computer, just so... You know, the steps are easy to follow. And then I generate again. Now the computer is doing all the math. Why would you want your controller to do the math? Well, for one thing, um, it's easier to fine tune. Um, I mentioned before, maybe this tool is a regrind. If you have to run back to your computer to write up a new program because your dimension was off on your tool, that's going to be a pain. And since your dimension was off in the tool, and this is only designed for, for in-computer uh, processing when it comes to your compensation, it's going to give you a bit of a hiccup, and you're going to have to rewrite a program. But if you use Cutter Comp inside the controller, where it compensates it with the uh, G41, G42, it will make your life a bit easier, and you can fine-tune these quite, quite well. So, all right, well, that's all I've got for this video. Thank you for watching. If you liked, please comment, subscribe, and share, and all that good stuff. And I will see you all in the next video.